Member for Maple Ridge Mission. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to support Bill 30. The development of the LNG industry was discussed extensively in the 2013 election. We all remember the negative polling numbers going uh, into election for the BC Liberals, and it's a good example that elections do make a difference. And one of the uh, key elements what, for the victory was vision, was economic vision, was employment vision, and LNG was an important part of the vision. It is criticized by the NDP as, uh, at that time, as pie in, the, pie in the sky, a fantasy, and I can understand why they're, they're against it, or against, uh, that we won't be supporting this uh, bill, uh, partly because I don't think they believe that it would happen. But Petronas and Pacific Northwest LNG decision is a big deal. It's not a final de investment decision, but it's very close. This summer session is to keep the ball rolling to provide assurance of taxation for the industry. Energy sector has taken some very hard knocks lately uh, in the past year. The price of LNG relates to the price of oil, and that's gone down about 50%. And many projects have been shelved in Canada and elsewhere. Nevertheless, uh, Pacific Northwest LNG is moving forward towards its final investment decision of 36 billion US dollars, which is $46.6 .6 billion today, at the, according to the Bank of Canada's exchange rate. So it's the largest private project in British Columbia's history. And government policies and taxation measures make a difference. We can contrast that with Alberta, the newly minted NDP government under Rachel Notley. Last week, $20 billion oil sands expansion was postponed by at least five years by tech. And uh, that's the entire duration of the NDP government in Alberta. In the light of oil prices, industry was not willing to commit billions of dollars in a jurisdiction run by a government that has promised to raise taxes and has shown itself already to be quite anti-free enterprise in the short time that it's been in. And this is quite uh, similar to what's happened to NDP governments throughout, the, throughout uh, the nation. And that's too bad for workers there. It's, it's too bad for Alberta. It's too bad for Canada because oil sands are currently still the biggest economic driver in, in all of Canada we, when we all benefit. NDP governments, Mr. Speaker, make industry very nervous. That's why the LNG industry wants a long-term tax regime. They want to be secure and know what they're getting into to make the numbers work. If the numbers don't work, they will look elsewhere, and that's fair, but that doesn't help British Columbians. They know, industry knows, that the NDP has historically railed against big business, whether it's big corporations, big banks, big oil, big pharmaceuticals, big is bad, unless it's big tax increases or big government. The Premier and the government do not want to lose this opportunity for all British Columbians, hence the summer session. There are 300 to 400 long-term long jobs uh, once it's established, once it's built, and double that in indirect jobs, uh, let alone the impact it will have in the retail sector, in construction, banking, more teacher positions, because uh, many of them will have families that will be moving in the area. And this is very important for Prince Rupert and for Port Edwards and the entire Northwest. I was uh, reading a article from February the 8th, 2012, from Northern View, from Prince Rupert, and it said that, it talked about the decline in population in that area, that Prince Rupert ag agglomeration count, which includes the surrounding areas, fell by 2.5% from 13,392 to 13,052. That decline was the fifth highest in the country and the highest drop in all of BC. Port Edwards, also saw the population decline falling 5.7% to 577 people. And uh, that is actually, uh, if you look at the, the, the historical high of the, that region of Prince Rupert, it's a 28% decline in the population. First time I went to Prince Rupert was uh, on a cruise ship going on the way to Alaska and visited it, and beautiful country. There was some positive things happening. This is in 2010 with the expansion of the port and uh, even with the tourism industry, but you could tell that it has, the, the community, the city had seen uh, better days. And better days are, they will see, uh, uh, with the LNG expansion right here. So this is really important uh, for the Northwest, that's these communities, and for all of British Columbia. 
Mr. Speaker, better days will be in store for these two communities if we see a major, this major clean industry established. I want to see our communities, our cities rise up and thrive, not dry up and die. What happens in the Northwest or in the Northeast or in the Southeast benefits all British Columbians. My neighbor across the street has a young family and he flies to the Northwest uh, for work and then flies back on breaks. And this is happening all over. There are 4,500 uh, jobs that, uh, during the peak construction time that will be um, happening. And these are most construction workers go from one site or one project to another. I was touring the Ruskin Dam recently with the MLA for Pitt Meadows Maple Ridge. That's a $750 million project over several years with 250, about 250, 300 workers. And talking to one fellow uh, there, and he said he had been working on the Portman Bridge before, before uh, working in Ruskin. And other workers, you know, they had been working previous to that on the Pitt River Bridge. So they go from site to site. So that's keeping uh, these, uh, these construction workers, these, these skilled workers employed. It's important. The Pacific Northwest LNG will have about 18 times the construction workers that uh, the Ruskin Dam currently has. And there's hefty financial benefits for the province. In a little over 10 years of production by uh, 2030, estimated 8.6 billion in revenues. Uh, which are royalty revenue of 3.64 billion, LNG income tax of six, about 700 million, carbon tax of 1.6 uh, billion, corporate income tax of 1.2 billion, PST of 1.26 billion, motor, motor fuel tax of 462 million, and property tax of 253 million. It's, and it works out to be roughly $700 million a year. Put that into perspective, that would have paid for, almost paid for the Golden Ears Bridge between Langley and Maple Ridge or for that matter, paid off the entire Ruskin Dam. Or it would have covered the, uh, the cost in one year for the Abbotsford Regional Hospital and Cancer Center, twice over. Put, a, put another way, it would cover, in a year, the combined budgets of these following ministries, uh, according to the 2015-16 budget estimates. It would include uh, the, the uh, budget for agriculture at 80 million, environment at 150 million, Community sports and culture at 228 million, energy mines 28 million, jobs, tourism, skills, training at 199 million, the office of the premier, throw that in, at 9 million, and there'll still be more left over. So it would cover all that in the revenues received um, uh, each year. Or uh, about 8,500 8, uh, teachers' uh, salaries. I'm estimating that about $85,000 so, uh, per year. So it, this is really important. There's a, and by the way, just to, this is important for the economy, and, and this government is, the Premier uh, understands the handling of this government, of, of the economy. And I just uh, was announced today the $1.6 billion surplus uh, that uh, we saw in the 2014-2015 uh, year, fiscal year, which is $1.5 billion over the, uh, the, pro the projection. So if this was the only LNG uh, plant facility to be built in British Columbia, it still would be a very big deal. It's worth the attention and, and the effort. But we have a bigger vision and working on it. The taxation re regime is, is to pave the way for other players to come to a final investment decision. I know the member for Vancouver Fairview mentioned about tying the hands of future governments. Well, uh, actually, I, think, I believe that it, it, it opens the opportunity, opens a hand for for these LNG uh, companies to be able to come and to invest in British Columbia because there is certainty, which wouldn't be the case if they knew the, because they know the history of the NDP and they're concerned about that. So there are currently 20 LNG proposals at one stage or another. 11 LNG proposals have received export approval from Canada, Canada's National Energy Board. Uh, there are others that have, seven others that have uh, LNG projects, three facilities, four pipelines are under review and uh, numerous projects uh, with Kitimat, Kitimat LNG, LNG Canada, uh, Coastal Gas Link Pipeline, Pacific Trail Pipelines, Prince Rupert Gas Transmission Pipeline, West Coast Connector Gas and the Transmission Pipeline. This is great news. And uh, this, is, this is a very important first step. But to tell you the truth, as we mentioned, if this was the only one, this is a big deal for British Columbia. The, be the benefits are immeasurable. Furthermore, it's a clean industry. Liquid natu uh, natural gas is colorless, hence no smog. It's odorless, it's non-toxic, it's non-corrosive, and it evaporates immediately. The boiling point is 100, minus 163 degrees Celsius. I said negative. 
which uh, uh, I guess the past couple of days, so the uh, probe has been going past Pluto. And on the sunny side of Pluto, that that's about the temperature of uh, uh, facing the sun, about 170, minus 170 degrees Celsius. So it's a boiling point. So what's the importance of that? Well, it means that LNG boils, it evaporates even in the coldest regions of the Earth, which is important. Why? Because you're not going to see any LNG slicks or sheens, as is the, is the case with oil. Once the gas is liquefied and purified, it is, sh it is shipped in special LNG carrier, uh, carriers. There are over 400 LNG carriers that are operating globally. Delivering 80, they have delivered 80,000 cargos and covered 240 million kilometers on the global shipping routes over the years. And there have been zero uh, cargo losses through cargo tank failures. British Columbians can be confident that an LNG industry won't come at the cost of maritime risk. Mr. Speaker, in the light of the overall benefits to the people of our province, I believe it's incumbent upon us as members of the legislature to support this legislation and see this industry established as expeditiously as possible. Thank you.